Well, welcome to another installment of HeadFirst JavaScript Programming Teasers. In this installment, we're going to take a closer look at scope. If you've already got a little programming experience in another language, JavaScript scope is going to seem a little odd. And if you don't, JavaScript scope might still seem a little odd. And there are some subtle things that can trip you up if you're not expecting them as you learn the language. First thing to know about JavaScript scope is that there are two kinds of scope, global scope and local scope. Local scope is created with functions and we'll come back to that in just a bit. For now, let's start with global scope. Global scope just means your variables are visible globally. That means everywhere in your code. In a web page, global scope is defined by the script tags. Any variable you declare at the top level is visible everywhere in your code. And that includes any code you link to as well. Notice that in this code, we've declared and initialized the variable avatar name at the very top of our code, and then we're referencing the variable below to display the value in the console. This seems logical where you declare our variable before we use it, and our code works just fine. When we run it, we see the value of the variable in the console. But here's where scope in JavaScript already gets a little bit weird. What happens if we move the line of code where we're displaying the value of avatar name using console.log above where we declare and initialize the variable avatar name? What do you think will happen when we run this code? Here, we're attempting to display the value of a variable that shouldn't exist yet because we haven't declared it. So you might expect that we'll get some kind of error. But when we run the code, we don't get an error. Instead, we see the value undefined. Okay, let's try one more thing. Now we'll get rid of the line of code where we're declaring and initializing the variable avatar name altogether. Now what do you think will happen? Will we still see the value undefined or will we get an error? And when we run the code this time, we get an error. And in Chrome, that error is uncaught reference error, avatar name is not defined. What's happening here is something we call hoisting and it's unique to JavaScript. You can think of hoisting like this. When you declare and initialize a variable below other code that has the same scope, in this case global scope, it's as if the variable is actually being declared at the very top of the code and then initialized later. So what that means is when we go to display the value of avatar name before we initialize it, we get its default value undefined, which is the value of any variable that hasn't been initialized to a value yet. And then of course, when we display the value of avatar name after it's been initialized to a value, we see that value. In JavaScript, function declarations are also hoisted, but in a slightly different way. In this example, we've defined a function play game at the bottom of our code, and we're calling the function play game above where the function is defined. And this code works just fine. We see the name that we're passing into the function displayed in the console. And what you can see here is that we're calling the function play game before we define the function play game. The reason this works is because all function declarations are parsed before the rest of the code. It's as if we take the entire function declaration and move it above the rest of the code. So both the function name as well as the function definition are defined before the rest of the code is evaluated. If you're coming to JavaScript from another language like Java or C Sharp, for instance, you might also be surprised to find that JavaScript doesn't have block scope. A block is just a section of code that is grouped together like a block of code for an if statement. So in this example, we execute the statement to declare and initialize the variable in trouble only if the conditional is true. That is, if the variable avatar name is equal to the string Frodo. Now in a language with block scope, the scope of the variable in trouble would be limited to just that one block of code. That is, all the code between the opening and closing curly braces after the if conditional. In trouble would not be defined anywhere else. And if we tried to refer to it somewhere else, we'd get a reference error like the one we saw earlier. But JavaScript doesn't have block scope. Remember, JavaScript has only global scope and local scope. So in this case, the scope of in trouble is global. So when we execute the code below to test to see if in trouble is true, we find that it is indeed true because avatar name does equal Frodo. So we do see help displayed in the console. 
Now let's see what happens if we declare and initialize the variable in trouble to true only if avatar name is Sam instead. That means in this particular example, that conditional will not be true, so we will not execute that statement. This time we don't see help displayed in the console, but we don't see an error either. So what's going on? Well, that's because just like before, the variable in trouble is hoisted. So it's as if we declare the variable at the top of the code and then initialize its value in the statement that's executed if avatar name is equal to the string Sam. In this example, avatar name is not Sam, it's Frodo. So the value of in trouble is undefined, which is why we don't see help in the console. Okay, we've talked a lot about global scope. So what about local scope? Local scope is created by a function. Whenever you have a function, you've got local scope. Each function's scope is separate. So whatever you do in one function won't affect what you do in another. The variables you've declared globally are visible in the local scope, but the variables you declare in the functions are not visible in the global scope. Let's take a look at a function play game. Here, we've got one parameter and we're declaring a couple of variables within the function. The scope of all the variables to find in the function is local. That includes message, in trouble, and name. So notice that local scope includes the parameters as well. And hoisting also happens within a function. If you declare a variable somewhere other than at the top of the function, like we're doing with in trouble, that variable is visible throughout the function, but it won't be defined until after the code to initialize its value has been executed. We said that functions create local scope, and this applies to functions that are nested within other functions as well. In this example, we've got a function attack that's nested within the function play game. The variables name and message are defined in play game, and so their scope is local to the play game function, which means that they're visible in the entire play game function, including within the nested function attack. The variable player, however, is defined in the attack function, so its scope is local and limited to just that function. That means player is not visible outside the attack function. So the key to understanding scope in JavaScript is to remember that there are two kinds of scope, global and local. Variables and functions defined at the top level of your code are global. Every function that you add to your code creates a local scope, and any variable that's defined within a function is local to that function. Variables defined in an enclosing scope are visible to the scopes nested within it, but variables defined in the nested scope are not visible to the enclosing scope. Well, that's it for this installment of Headfirst JavaScript Programming Teasers. Stay tuned for the next installment, and we'll see you again soon. Music